what is going down youtube town it's your homeboy captain retro and we're gonna film a quick little video here on something very cool that i got in the mail today uh as you may or may not know i picked up a pin bot a while back and uh everything once i got all put back together everything's working good except for the score displays so what we've got here is a box from wolfpack technologies for the Williams System 11 or the Data East uh, Laser Wars replacement display kit. Uh, and this is just the, the individual pieces and kit. And it comes all disassembled. And uh, you put it together yourself. And it actually saves you about 100 bucks to do it that way. You can buy one for like 250 put together. Or you can pay like 150 and get the kit sent to you. So here's what the kit comes with just to show you what it looks like. Uh, it comes with all your components that you will need to solder into the board resistors, uh, connectors, mainly connectors, resistors, and uh, then you just have to put the chips in, uh, but you have to build everything on the board and the displays. So these are all your PCBs that are printed out for the display boards themselves, and then you'll go through, and this one looks like it is the dis uh, credit and display one, so or credit and ball in play, so there's two on here on each side. This will be your credit, this will be your ball in play, and then the ones in the back, look like they've got more slots you really can't see here, but on the back you can. Uh, those are for the actual digit. Uh, and I went with the red LEDs, so that's what these are. And in here, kind of at an angle, you might be able to see what's in there. These are the digits for the actual display. So you get to build everything as well as you uh, you solder in your, uh, your ICs into this main component motherboard type situation that everything feeds off of. It, it gets the information from the game to play. So I'm gonna put them together one by one. I'm not really gonna show you how to do that. Uh, it's just soldering and finding out where the stuff goes, but it's really like plug and play. You know, you put the thing there, you solder it down. You put the thing there, you solder it down. Uh, you, you put your edge connector on there, you solder it together, uh, and then you're onto the next board. Uh, so it's pretty quick and you know, it might take me 45 minutes to an hour to build this whole thing, but it'll save me a hundred bucks overall from doing it and letting them do it at the factory. So that's cool. I like that you can buy it as a component only kit. Uh, it's it's pretty neat. And you know, once you learn how to do this kind of stuff, the through hole component repair, uh, it's pretty easy to do. Um, it's really hard to mess it up. So you just gotta figure out your alignments and make sure the things are in there the right way. I believe all these things are bipolar directions. They can go either way. Uh, unlike a diode that only has, can only go one way in a circuit. Um, but we'll figure that out when we read the instructions and we'll get it together and you will See what happens when I get them all displayed in the pin bot. Hooray! So here in my lap is the motherboard, and it's the first thing you build according to the instructions. So I'm using those. And you make sure your notches line up, you lay your chips in, and you solder them in place. We've got one U1, 2, and 3 are the same type of chip. U4, 5, and 6 are the same type of chip. And these two, Q2 and Q1, will be the same types of chips. Uh, they are the next ones to go in. And then I'll be building connectors around the edges for everything and you lay your resistors in and uh you're good to go i believe I need a capacitor at the end of each one of these capacitor 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 c c for capacitor and uh we'll be good to go for the motherboard and then we got to build all the individual boards but as you can see that's the front and there's my solder jobs on the back don't want to go crazy too much extra solder there's some good i, I like to put um flux down that's what the liquidy looking black area is that's just to keep the board from heating up and melting or anything crazy but we're getting there we are getting there here is uh one of the completed master boards that go on the front this is the 14 segment display uh there's these can spell out words and do all the stuff they're the top two displays player one and player two respectively uh, we've got two of these made up now, and we've got three more boards to build, and then we can go plug it all in and see what happens. Uh, the rest of them get regular um, nine segment boards, or what, let's see here, four, seven, seven segments, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a, and a comma, so eight, I suppose. And then this one is just the going to have two here, two here, and the other ones will have seven across each one of those. We're almost done. We're about an hour deep into doing all this. All right, so about an hour and a half in all of sitting here and doing this stuff and watching some videos. But we've got all the boards built and ready to go, and they've got their little foam protectors on them. And we're gonna go pop them in the, uh, in the pin bot and see what happens. Wish me luck. 
All right, so here she is. These are the old scoreboard and the master control board. That I actually bought off of eBay beforehand because the other one was broken. I got it working. I got all these displays working, but I just felt like it would look better with red LEDs. And the high speed over here was missing a couple displays uh, that were not working. So we're going to be able to get a full working set for it out of these. And we'll. I like the orange in that back glass. I think this will look better with red. And I had to do one or the other, you know, so we picked this one. So let's give it some juice and see if she comes to life. Well, I got some switches that we need to adjust. The left slingshot hasn't fired in a while, apparently. But you can't really see how red it is, but by God, I can. And it looks fantastic. We've got, looks like one display down here is uh when that thing came across there with the numbers we had some issues we got one one segment was out i think yeah we got a segment out down here so i might need to take that board off and re-solder make sure i got it all soldered correctly uh, but hey we're close and it looks great and it will work I, I i think i just missed a solder probably just one point on there that i missed a solder glob so let's go check that I just got the solder in there and restart. Let me turn this flash off. That might, might be the reason it doesn't look so red. All right, now let's see what happens. And it might get it out of just again. Yeah. Left slingshot. It probably hasn't been actuated in a while, or maybe there's something broke on it. Let's see if that segment is now fixed. Look at there. All segments are working. There was one spot of solder that I didn't get laid good right there at that line. And, uh... It didn't work right. So let me put the back glass in there and show you what it looks like. She looks fantastic. The back glass is in great shape and those red letters really stand out and look great. Every digit doing its digity thing. Let's see the flasher show. Give me some flashing. I see you. Come on, baby. Give me the flashers. I was going to go through the high scores first. But, uh, this game's really cool. You start uh, at Pluto, technically, and you go, you try and get all the way to Jupiter. And Jupiter's flashing at all points for some reason. Oh, oh, we got some dancing going on. Very cool game. This game's in great shape. This is the one I picked up from the church. Uh, I paid $600 for it. It was in pretty good condition. The boards were wrecked. So it's had the MPU has been completely rebuilt on it. I put a brand new power supply in it. It now has a brand new score display too. But this was working as well. All this works and is going to go in the high speed. Although I don't need to put this in there. So I'll have a backup uh, Williams System 11 display board uh, ready to go in something. Uh, but the next thing I wanted to show you guys out in the garage. I'm using this as a table right now. Because I know I'm going to be repainting it and rebuilding the box. But look what we got. We got a time warp. 1979 Williams Time Warp, and uh, it's it's seen better days. We get to rebuild the head on it. Uh, the body is disgusting. Um, it, this is supposed to be white, and it is a very off brown, yellow, black, blue, white. You really can't tell. Uh, the playfield is even more hideous. I was told that it was out in a barn for the last 30 years or so. Don't know what the actual story is on that. But I do know that they make a hard top for this game. That's one thing. Pinball Pimp makes a stencil kit. And I've got a full set of boards for a Williams System 6. I don't have this game's ROM flashed, but I can get that easily. And uh, so we're going to completely rebuild this one and repaint it and make it look glorious. And, uh, you know, try and sell it for more than they go for generally. Because it'll be factory fresh again when I get done with it. The coolest thing about this game is the banana flippers. As you can see, they're little rounded banana flippers. And this is technically the rubber that's still on there. This is probably the original rubber from 79, but it's just cracking off and flaking. And uh, they look terrible. It, it's it's a weird ass rubber that goes on there anyway. It covers off sides and it like goes down like a top. And uh, yeah, it's strange. Um, but we're gonna get this thing cleaned up and you're you're not gonna believe the difference between this game and what I what it ends up looking like. Uh, the Xenon over here is finished and fully functioning and looking great, but it also 
It doesn't need a hard top, I wouldn't say. Like, that's not terrible, but it's not perfect. And if I can get a hard top for a game and put it on there and make it look right, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do another Xenon hard top on the channel. And we were going to do a high speed hard top as well. But I got a buddy that bought this. He wanted to buy it from me, so he went ahead and bought it, and he's going to do the hard top on it. And uh, I'm not going to worry about all that. It doesn't need it either. It's It's got a couple spots. It's not the ugliest thing you'll ever see. It's not the prettiest thing you'll ever see, but it's a really fun game. There's my car keys on there. It's fitting for high speed. But what I got to do right now is finish putting this, the boards back in it so he can have a full set of working boards to go with it. Uh, this game's great. It plays fun, plays fast. It does have a blue target where there should be a green target and, you know, a couple spots on the play field. There's mylar over the main part, but up here in the in the orbits, you got some wood damage all around the corners up there and everywhere where the ball comes through here where there's no mylar. There's some scratches and scrapes, but otherwise it looks pretty good, pretty faded. This orangey look should be more red, uh, but this game's great too. And then back glass is absolutely flawless. Uh, not one scratch in that back glass. It looks gorgeous, and this game plays great, but yeah, again, it's already been sold. I got it. I sold the mousing around to Brian at Portal Pinball, and he paid me some cash and traded me this as well, and then I went. it wasn't working, but I went ahead and got it fixed up and then moved it on to another friend. So uh, that's what's going on down here, but I'm going to stand around and play some, play some Pinbot and see what's going on with this Switch issue, and uh, we're going to have some fun. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Captain Retro.